פרטי חוב גימור. חוב בייס, חוב בייס. ויבואו הנושים על הנושים. The men came together with the women. כל נתיב לב, all the, those who had generosity of the heart, because that was a prerequisite to accept any of the materials. If anybody felt that he was forced to give, the participation was not acceptable. He had to be נתיב לב. הביאו חוך ונזם וטפס וחומוס, קוקלי זוב, these are various Articles of jewelry, gold jewelry. Which the woman wears. So the woman brought their jewelry. And the male also tithed the gold Hashem, the gold that he had. So Rashi over here explains one of these various pieces of jewelry, and the Torah identifies what they were. Choch, hutashit shelzov ogul nosen al azroa. It's a bangle, which is one on the arm. Vuatzomid, that's called tzmidim. Chumaz, klizov shu nosen keneged osem mokom liisha. It's a piece of jewelry which a woman wears to cover her private places. And why is it called kumos? Rabbi Sein Pirshu Shum Kumos, Kan Mokum Zima. It's a location of Zima. So that the woman also gave. So I asked the question. We find regarding the Kior. The laver was made of copper. And where did that copper come from for the kior? And the kior, the water of the kior was used for a number of things. The Kohanim would ritualize their hands and feet from that laver, which was made of copper, every day. Because if a Kohen did not ritualize his hands and feet before he did the service, it was not valid. And it's a Torah violation. In addition, if a woman was a suspected adulteress, the Kohen would write the writ of the Sota, take water from the Kior, and obliterate that writ of Sota into the water, and then the woman would drink it. And that would determine whether she committed adultery or not. If she did, she would die. If not, not only would she not die, her health would thrive, and many positive consequences would come about. So initially, it says the women brought... their copper mirrors, the mirrors that they would beautify themselves with. And Moshe initially rejected it. Why did he reject it? Because those mirrors, what is a mirror? A mirror is the article which is used for a woman to beautify herself. She looks in the mirror, she beautifies herself. So it's literally, it's the paraphernalia of the Yetzir Hora. So Moshe Rabbeinu said, under no circumstance, we're, uh, we're going to accept that. To take that mirror which a woman attracts the male with, when she beautifies herself, it's not acceptable. It's such a holy place. So Hashem says no to the contrary. Those mirrors that they want to bring, those mirrors are most beloved to me. Why? Because when the Jews were in Egypt and they had... given a Pope that there'd be a redemption and they didn't want to procreate any longer, the women would go out with these mirrors into the fields and they, together with their husbands, they would look in the mirrors together and they would entice their husbands and they would procreate in the field. And as a result of that, there were Jewish children born and therefore the mirrors are called Maros HaTzovos. The mirrors of the Tzovos, what Tzovos? So it means the legions of Jews who left Egypt were only due to those mirrors. So 
That's the reason why these, mo- these mirrors are most dear to me. Because if not for the women going out and enticing the, mother, the, the husbands to have children, there would, never, there would have never been a redemption. Because we said that there was a critical mass of Jews that had to be at Sinai. You had to have 600,000 males above the age of 20. So if the men wouldn't procreate, there'd be no children, there is no Kabbalah Zatora. So due to what the women had done, therefore the world met its objective that there was a Sinai. Therefore, these mirrors are most beloved to me, are most special to me. But Moshe initially wanted to reject it because of what, what the mirror represents. And here we find regarding the gold, the bracelets, the jewelry, which makes a woman attractive. And even the Torah identifies one of these articles of jewelry, which has to do with a, a place of a woman, which is something which we don't discuss. And even that was accepted. And Moshe initially didn't reject that. He didn't reject that piece of jewelry because it has that level of representation. The question is why? So the answer is very simple. Here, the gold that was given was from many sources. The men gave the gold, the women gave the gold. The gold was smelted down. And now you have this bullion, this mass of gold from many sources. But there's no, it can't be identified that its source is one source. The mirrors, the kior would have been made only from the mirrors. So what does the kior represent? What would be the basis to identify the kior, the laver? This is the made of the mirrors. That is the article which entices men to women. That is part of the paraphernalia of the evil inclination. Therefore Moshe originally wanted to reject it and Hashem says no to the contrary. Because the women use those mirrors in a context only to guarantee that there should be a Jewish people, therefore those mirrors are most beloved to me. So now, it's interesting. It says a Chazal that the reason why Hashem says, I allow my name to be obliterated, in that writ of Sota, the name of Hashem is, is written there, and there's a Torah violation, you're not permitted to obliterate the name of God. But for the sake of Shalom Bayis, because in fact the woman did not commit adultery, to restore Shalom Bayis, therefore Hashem says, I will allow my name to be obliterated. That's the reason why Hashem says, you could obliterate it. So what do we see from here, the takeaway seemingly? You see how important Shalom Bayis is, to be able to maintain harmony in a home, to secure a relationship with husband and wife, you see how important it is, how Hashem values Shalom Bayis. So what I said was, there's no proof from there. Hashem says, I will allow my name to be obliterated for the sake of Shalom Bayis. If not for the woman, there would not be a Jewish people. Because those mirrors were used for the woman to be attractive to the husband should procreate. And therefore, as a result of that, there was a Jewish people and ultimately there was a Kabbalah Satora. Because if the men wouldn't have procreated with the women, as I said, the critical mass of 600,000 men above the age of 20 would have never come about. So I, it's, Hashem is saying, I owe it to the woman. Because if not for the woman, the, my name would not be known in the world. Therefore, I allow my name to be obliterated to restore the relationship between the husband and wife. Because if not for her, there would no, there'd be no God in this world. That's the Shalom. But not because God just values Shalom bias. Hashem feels indebted to the woman for what she had done, that although the women, men had despaired and they had no interest in continuing, the women encouraged them and enticed them. Therefore, as a result of that, Hashem says, I allow my name to be obliterated for the sake of Shalom Bayis, because if not for the woman, there'd be no Yudke Vavke, there'd be no name of God.